How's it going, friends? I am Cedric, and I love classic men's style. Now today we are going to talk all about the jacket. And because, ironically, when talking about the waistcoat, I was wearing a jacket, the waistcoat. I thought today I'd wear a waistcoat. So, I am going to talk about the three types of jackets that I have mentioned so often in my previous videos. The suit jacket, the sport coat, and the blazer. What is a suit jacket? Well, I'm going to tell you something. A suit jacket is the jacket part of a suit. <laughs> Mind blown, right? Um, this jacket is part of a suit. Uh, that means that it is part of a set of a jacket and a pair of trousers. On my left, which for you will be right, <laughs> I have a sport coat. This is the brown jacket that I've already talked about in the past and in the video it didn't look brown at all. Wear brown. I know. This is a sport coat. What is a sport coat? A sport coat is a jacket that doesn't have a matching pair of trousers. But what is a blazer? Well, a lot of people use the term blazer for a jacket, whether it be a sport coat or a suit jacket. That is actually wrong. A blazer is also a jacket that stands on its own, but is often navy blue with some sort of metallic buttons. You could also find striped blazers, and that is because the history of the blazer has to do with sailing, it has to do with rowing, those stripes are the stripes of like rowing clubs. If it's not one of those, you don't have a blazer, you have a sport coat. But this doesn't look very sporty, so why do they call it a sport coat? The origins of this type of jacket are actually in the Victorian era and the early 20th century. Sports were something for the elite, and the sports that the elite like to do, if I can believe all of the TV shows. <laughs> They like to do things like hunting, they like to do things like golf, horseback riding, that sort of thing. If you want to run a marathon in this... <laughs> if you want to run a marathon in this, good luck, but that's not the kind of sport coat we're talking about. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk a bit more about the different details and styles that you can find. And I'll start with the pockets. These two jackets have different kinds of pockets. This jacket has flat pockets. Oh, this jacket has flat pockets, which is a bit more formal. So the flat pockets are what you will see most often. It's most appropriate for business. This jacket has patch pockets. The pockets are sewn on to the jacket. At first, I was not a fan. To me, it didn't feel like a pocket that was appropriate to a suit. The patch pocket is the most casual kind of pocket. Why do I like the patch pocket when I didn't at first? To me, it looks more aesthetically pleasing. Aesthetics. Because it doesn't break up the line of the suit as much. The most flat and the most even you can get is a welted pocket. Neither of these has a welted pocket. Let me grab a jacket that does have a welted pocket. This jacket has welted pockets. It looks like a flat pocket without the flap. That is the most formal. You will not see that on most suits or sport coats. And actually, if you do see it on them, I would advise you not to buy that. That is mostly, if not exclusively, for evening wear. So for black tie, for white tie. So now that we've talked about the pockets, I will tell you about the three types of lapels. The most common type of lapel is the notch lapel. This jacket has a notch lapel. You have an indentation between the lapel and the collar. This jacket has peak lapels, which means that the lapel goes up. For the third type of lapel, I will have to get out the same jacket I got out a second ago. This jacket has a shawl collar. A shawl collar means that the collar of the jacket extends into the lapel. This is a very formal type of lapel and you will not see them on most suits. And if you do, stay clear of those suits because they are probably not appropriate for everyday wear. Then why is there a shawl collar? Once again, black tie. When it comes to black tie, you also want to make sure that the lapels of your jacket are either a shawl collar or peak lapel.
Now another difference between the two jackets behind me, we have a single breasted jacket, we have a double breasted jacket. The double breasted jacket is the only jacket for which it is possible that you only need to bottom the button button. I said that correctly. Button button unbuttoned. I don't really like that style, but um, if you want to see great examples of jackets like that, I know Hugo Jacome loves those and he rocks them. He rocks the hell out of them. So definitely give Sartorial Talks um, and Hugo Jacome a watch as well. How should they fit? That really depends on your personal taste and on the style you are going for. But there are a few things that are universal. Right now, I am wearing my double-breasted jacket. As you can see, the fit is very nice. When buying a jacket, there are a few things you need to watch for, things that can't be altered. So the first thing is your shoulders. The shoulder of the jacket needs to end exactly where your shoulder ends. The second thing you need to watch for is where your jacket stops. That is also something that cannot be altered. I do like my jackets to be a little shorter. However, for most people, you want it to fall right underneath your bottom. You want it to cover your butt entirely. Other things you need to pay attention to. The sleeve length. When you're wearing your jacket, you want to show a bit of cuff. You want it to be roughly be somewhere between one and two centimeters. The sleeve length is something you can get altered. Except if these buttons are real buttons, real buttonholes, it is more difficult to alter the sleeve length because they cannot undo the holes that are in the fabric. Now I will show you a jacket where there is too much pull on the button. If your jacket fits like this, I have bad news for you. This is too tight. Something you also want to look for in a jacket, you want to look for a jacket that doesn't show your shirt when you button it. You see that like this, it doesn't show my shirt. Um, yeah. One more thing about the double-breasted jacket. The double-breasted jacket always has to have peak lapels. What do you wear it with? Yes. <laughs> You can really wear them with anything you can wear a waistcoat with. If you want to know what to wear a waistcoat with, definitely check out my video on waistcoats. Plus t-shirts, plus sweaters without a collar, plus polos. I'm not really a fan of t-shirts and sweaters without a collar. But it's really up to you. So that was it for me today. If you liked the video, hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel as well, it really helps out. If you have any questions, any comments, any suggestions for further videos, leave them in the comment section. That was it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. What else, what else, what else? 